Hello and welcome back to another Aspiring Medics YouTube video. In today's video, we're looking at the BMAT section three and looking at eight top tips that helped me score in the top percentile of the BMAT. Without further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, first of all, we'll be looking at a general overview of BMAT section three. Then we'll go over some common myths that we can bust. And finally, we'll get onto my top eight tips for section three. If you wanna skip straight to those tips, Click on this timestamp to get you there without any of the introduction. Let's get into it. Okay, so what is section three of the BMAP? Well, it's the essay paper, meaning that you're given an A4 page to fill with an answer to a controversial question. These questions tend to involve either medical topical issues or ethical issues. And what are the timings for section three? You're given 30 minutes to answer one out of three possible essay questions. This seems like quite a lot of time to write one side of A4. And for many people that is the case, meaning that they have a relatively large proportion of time to spend on planning. However, a critical part of your preparation should be writing practice essays, meaning that you know roughly how long it takes you to write the essay and therefore how much time you can afford to spend planning it before you start. A general structure that you might like to use in BMAP section three is to start off with a general introduction in which you define what is meant by the question as well as the specific terms within it. You can then follow this up with two big paragraphs in which you argue both for and against the statement in the question. Finally, you round it all off with a conclusion, which is meant to be relatively balanced, but also compelling and gives you a chance to offer your own opinion briefly. So, which universities use the BMAP? On the side here, you can see a full list of all the UK BMAP universities. Although it's worth noting that not all of these will put the same weighting on BMAP. It's also worth noting that section three tends to be the section that universities look at the least. There are certain universities which put a considerable weighting on it, but there are some which won't even look at section three or might just put on a minimum quality of English language score. This is the sort of thing that's really worth checking before you approach the BMAP. Okay, let's move on to some common myths about BMAP section three. The first myth is that in the BMAT section three essay, you need to choose a side and defend it with your life. This is completely not true. In fact, the BMAT really quite likes you to provide a relatively balanced argument and actually consider points from both sides of the argument. This helps to provide a more well-rounded argument and makes it seem less like an opinion piece and more like a review. The second myth is that BMAT section three offers the greatest opportunity for improvement out of all of the three sections. For some people, this might indeed be the case because they can improve their essay structure and really focus on their spelling, punctuation and grammar. However, for a lot of people, their quality of English score will not improve by very much and in fact, the universities which they're applying for might not weight BMAT section three that heavily. If you look up your BMAT universities and find that they really don't put a great emphasis on section three, your time might be better spent on sections one and two. That's not to say that you should completely neglect section three, but you need to carefully analyze how much potential for improvement you have by practicing section three. And therefore you need to allocate your practice time accordingly. Myth number three is that the more you write, the better. This might seem intuitive since you're given 30 minutes for the essay. It might seem like you should want to spend as much of that as you can writing. However, there is a strict one page limit on the essay. And it might seem like you can get around this by writing really small or slanting your handwriting or something. But in reality, this is not gonna fool the examiners. And one thing that the examiners are looking for is clear and concise writing. If you simply put too many words the argument becomes a lot more convoluted and complex, and it doesn't have that same conciseness that will score you marks. Okay, now that we're done with myth busting, let's move on to my top eight tips for BMAT section three. Tip number one is to practice debating with friends and family. You might have other friends who are applying to medicine, or maybe you can just practice with your siblings or family at the dinner table. Arguing small medical topics can be really useful in formulating arguments and practicing how you can clearly convey your ideas in writing. Especially if you're debating ethics, these sort of discussions can help you formulate more balanced arguments because they help you see the other side's perspective too. Tip number two is to try out different planning strategies. Ultimately, since you have a relatively large amount of time in section three spent on planning, it's really important to find out what works best for you to provide an efficient plan. For some people, this simply involves bullet points, while others prefer a mind map or drawing some sort of diagram. Whatever it is, 
try out different options and find out what works best for you so that when you start writing your essay, you have a clear essay plan that ensures that you don't miss out any of the critical elements for section three. Tip number three is to not forget the basics. This applies to both the arguments you're making and the components of the argument. So what I mean by this is that there will be certain arguments for and against the statement given that seem almost too obvious to mention. However, it's important to mention these because they often form the foundation of the argument. Similarly, it's very easy to miss out very basic components of the answer, including defining the terms in the statement. There'll be marks available for this, and therefore, if you skip it out, you'll be dropping marks needlessly. Tip number four, and this might be controversial, is don't choose a topic that you feel passionately about. On one hand, choosing a topic that you are passionate about means that you probably have a lot of arguments in favor of your opinion. But on the other hand, it can mean that your writing comes across as too one-sided or opinionated. And this actually isn't what BMAT section three is about. If you are sure that you are able to provide a well-balanced and rounded argument, you can go for it, but make sure to argue for both sides as per usual. Tip number five is to make flashcards about current events. So this will not only help you in BMAT section three in case a related essay comes up, it will also help you in your interviews and your future career as a doctor. Inspiring Medics have actually made lots of resources and YouTube videos about recent events, such as the mass wave of doctors leaving the NHS in recent years. Click over here to check these videos out. Tip number six is to follow through on points. When you're only given a single page, it's very tempting to argue as many different points as you can within that page to try and make it seem like you've written more. This is of course a good idea, but you don't wanna spend only a couple of words on each concept because it doesn't seem like you're really making an argument so much as just listing ideas. Therefore, when you provide an argument in support or against the statement given, make sure you follow it up with an example or further describe what exactly you mean by that sentence. You have to of course make sure that you are balancing the need for a concise argument with developing your points fully. Tip number seven is to use short sentences. That's not to say that every sentence has to be short, but students tend to fall into the trap of writing more convoluted sentences when they're trying to explain difficult concepts. Sometimes it's best to just put a full stop and make your writing seem more clear and concise. Tip number eight is to practice writing conclusions that are strong and compelling but also balanced. This is crucial because the last two sentences are what will leave a lasting impression on your examiner. If you make these final sentences strong and compelling, it really rounds off your argument and leaves a good impression. But if you make them too opinionated, it also gives the wrong idea. It might seem as if it's counterintuitive to be able to write a strong and compelling conclusion that's also balanced, but there is a certain art to it. You need to ensure that you're not sitting on the fence too much as the examiners won't like this. But at the same time, you need to make it clear that your ultimate conclusion is based off a careful consideration of all the evidence and all of the points that you've made in your text so far. And that's it. Those are my top eight tips for BMAP section three. Feel free to check out our other two videos about BMAP top tips over here. And I'm also the course lead for the brand new BMAP course devised by the aspiring medics. You can find it in the link below. This course includes tens of videos that are expertly created to make you more prepared for each of the three sections for the BMAP. So I hope you found that useful and I hope to see you on the BMAP course.